In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the valve cover on this Ford F-150. In our case, we're working on the 5.4 liter 3 valve V8. Let's get started. To get started on this valve cover replacement, we have to get the intake tubing out of the way. Right by the air filter housing next to the mass airflow sensor, there's going to be a clamp. Loosen it up with an 8mm socket or a flathead screwdriver. Don't remove it, just loosen it. And right by the throttle body, there will be another one, same size. With this loosened up, you can now pull the intake tubing out of the way and set it aside. Now let's disconnect the PCV hose that clips on to the top of the valve cover here. All you have to do to do this is pry this little gray clip out and down. That unlocks the hose or the fitting for the hose and you can pull this up and move it out of the way. You can't really see it, I can't see it either, but if, if you follow the, the hose on the back side, there will be a clip just like this one. If you unclip it, you can pull this out and set it completely aside so that it's not hanging over where we're gonna work. Next, I want to unplug everything so I can move this harness aside. Just start in the front, unplug all of the ignition coils, as well as the injectors, so that you can have as much slack in the harness as possible. And now as you can see, the harness is clipped in here and here onto some studs. Ignore this wire. You should not have this. This is because this truck has a remote starter attached to it and someone has tapped into the injector harness. Technically, it should not have that. To remove the harness off of the two retainers here, you just pull up on it and wiggle it. If that doesn't work, we might have to get a trim tool, but it looks like it does work. Be careful of this tube right here, this pipe, which is actually a vacuum supply to the brake booster. Looks like it's bolted on to the stud that holds on this harness. So there we go. There's that at the front. This is clipped into the valve cover. Pop this out. There's another connector right here at the front on the timing cover that you can unplug. And I should have done this earlier, but I didn't realize that it would actually be useful. I'm going to unclip this uh, connector here. This is just a ground. This is just a ground for this harness. Take a pocket screwdriver, pry the tab up. Well, it has to come out of here first and then pry this tab up and pull the connector out. Even though you might have enough slack with it just unhooked from the harness, disconnecting this will provide a wide open space for the valve cover to swing out of here. There we go. Now we can get this wiring harness pulled this way. This can be out of the way there. Now that we have the harness out of the way, if you have a lot of debris, like I do here, there's a lot of sand buildup and some leaves, I'm going to vacuum it. I recommend you do the same if that's the case for you. You can also use some compressed air and blow it out, but you wanna get rid of it, not only because of the ignition coils, you don't want anything falling in the spark plug tube holes, but you also don't want any debris along the valve cover where it meets the head, so that once we pull the valve cover off, there isn't a possibility of sand getting inside the head. Now use a 7mm socket and remove all of the mounting bolts for the ignition coils. Pull these up. Okay, so I moved this harness up. I was able to just maneuver it out of the way. Regardless of whether you have it hanging on this side or that side, it doesn't matter, this was just more out of the way for me. At this point, there are a bunch of eight millimeter bolts running around the whole valve cover. We have to unbolt them all, but keep in mind they won't come out. They do stay in the valve cover. Once you unthread them, they will just keep spinning and spinning in place without actually coming out. So having said that, I'm just gonna go around and unbolt them all. I'm gonna start at the rear, just because I wanna get the more difficult ones over with, and then I'll work my way towards the front. For these bottom ones, you can go through the wheel well. You do not have to remove the wheel or the fender liner for this. There should be plenty of room. For this one, you either have to do it by hand or with a swivel because of the steering shaft. And then, most likely, we're gonna have to unbolt the oil dipstick tube so that we can pull it away from the next bolt. I don't necessarily recommend bending it out of the way 
because you can permanently damage it, especially when it's rusty like this one. And if it breaks, you'll have to replace it. The bolt for the dipstick tube is also an eight millimeter. You don't have to take this bolt all the way out. I will, but uh, if you just want to pull the dipstick away at this point, you can. Okay, now we can pull this back like this. I'm actually just going to take a bungee cord, tie it this way, probably up against the upper control arm or something, just so I can have it pulled and held this way. Now you can get to this one that was right next to the dipstick tube. Since I'm working down here, I might as well continue. And that should be all of them. At this point, all that's holding this valve cover on is going to be the gasket itself from being partially stuck on there most likely. And then keep in mind that this solenoid has a grommet around it, so this is going to be a little bit stuck on here. We'll have to work it up and off of that solenoid. You can grab the valve cover if you have to. You can gently pry it. Just make sure you don't pry in areas that shouldn't be pried on, such as against the plastic intake, up against any sensors or anything like that. I'm gonna go right here on the corner of the head where it meets the valve cover. You can see it pops right off. In the back, unfortunately, it's very limited on space, so there isn't a lot of space to pry. You might be able to get a little screwdriver or a very small pry bar in there, but usually once you get it broken free off the front, you can just grab it and lift it. This uh, vacuum hose is gonna be still on here, so uh, try, and, try and lift it up and off. There we go. Wiggle this off. It should have enough slack in it to move out of the way. Now you can grab the valve cover, slide it right up and out. And there it is. In my case, the gasket stayed on the engine side. It doesn't usually happen, but this is actually a good thing because now I can take the vacuum cleaner and suck up all the sand that is still left on here from when the valve cover was on. As you can see, there's quite a bit of debris and the gasket is acting more like a, a dam, a barrier to prevent that from going in the engine. So it worked out in my case. And now if this is the case for you also, peel the valve cover gasket off of the engine block. If not, it's most likely going to still be on the valve cover in which case you'd remove it from there. And there you have it. Now if you had your new valve cover, you'd take your brand new gasket and line it up with the valve cover, place it on. Now I always recommend doing both sides at a time. And when you do this, obviously you'll get both side gaskets in one package, but it's not difficult to figure out which one is which because the other side will not fit on, the, well, it's wrong side because it's a mirror image of each other. So all of these loops you'll have on the opposite side. And this gasket only fits down one way, has a flat side on one side and a uh, pointy side on the other side. So like I said, once you lay them on the valve cover, it's easy to figure out which is which. Make sure that you press this in all the way around. You want this fully seated on the valve cover and it should basically lock into place, press itself down just like that. Perfect. One other note I'd like to put out there is the fact that you may have to transfer over your bolts to the new valve cover unless they already come with them, in which case they would also come with new gaskets. If not, here's how you remove them. Well, all you have to do is just wiggle them while pulling out and they should pop out. And if you need to, I'm gonna show you how to replace these grommets. Let's replace the grommets for these studs and the two bolts that are on this valve cover. The way to do that is you wanna take a razor blade and cut right down the middle, just like this. Once you have it cut, split it open, peel it off. This is the easiest way to get these off. Take the grommet, make sure it's facing with a larger part 
towards the larger seat here. Put it up against the stud. Spray some brake parts cleaner in here, just a little bit. The reason I do that is because it lubricates it, but it does dry up really quickly after it's installed, so I don't have to worry about this soaking in oil for a long time and potentially swelling up. As you can see, the brake parts cleaner is already dry and it made it so that I can slide the grommet on with ease. The clip I just showed you was actually from a different valve cover, but they have the same exact bolts and grommets. Mine are good, so I'm going to reuse them. They are still soft and malleable. If they are stiff and uh, they don't squish anymore, you're gonna wanna replace them, of course. There are two things I wanted to mention before we continue with reinstalling the valve cover. This is one you'll see RTV on the corner, on both corners, top and bottom, where the timing cover meets the head. We have to scrape this off and reapply new RTV because this split right here can and will cause an oil leak if you don't reapply it. The best way to get rid of that RTV is with a razor blade. Try not to scrape towards the inside of the head. I'm gonna pick this larger piece off by hand and then with a razor blade, I'm gonna come in and scrape upwards. That way I push all of this debris away from the engine. If you wanted to run the vacuum cleaner while you're scraping, that would also be a good idea and it'll basically catch everything that you're scraping. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just get the larger chunks off. Then I'm just gonna go around, make sure the rest of the surface is ready to go. There will be another spot just like this one on the bottom, on the other side of this timing chain and cam sprocket. So make sure you scrape that as well. Now, before we apply the RTV, after this area has been cleaned, I'm gonna take a rag with brake parts cleaner on it and just degrease it. I'm actually gonna go around the whole head surface where the valve cover goes on and do this, but it's very important to do it here so that the RTV can actually seal up properly and bond to the surface. Ideally, I would use uh, black RTV, which is meant for oil. This gray stuff is for high torque applications, but it also is very oil resistant. And if this is all you have, unfortunately, this is all I have at the moment, this works as well. Apply a little bit over here. I actually might've applied a little too much. So I'm gonna remove some with a gloved finger. If you put too much, it'll just squeeze out and into the head. You wanna to try to avoid that. And we're gonna do the same down here on the other side where the valve cover also needs to seal up properly. Try and make it as even and smooth as possible. Now make sure everything is cleaned up. As you can see, I degreased this surface. So let's bring the valve cover over. Now let's bring the valve cover in. Try not to shake debris from other uh, hoses and components here inside the engine. Slide it over gently so that the valve cover gasket does not get pinched or uh, torn or actually removed, popped out of the valve cover itself. You want it to stay seated right where you put it. And the most challenging part here is gonna be getting it over all the way onto the back of the head. There we go. That just seated itself perfectly in position right here. It's uh, seated over the solenoid. All of the bolts line up. I'm going to start some of them in. That way I'm sure that it is perfectly lined up with all of the threads. There we go. This one just started in. I'm gonna go around, start all of them, and then we will come back and snug them and torque them in the proper sequence. There is a sequence for this, keep that in mind. But before I do anything with that, I'm going to make sure that they're all actually lined up. And uh, the more of them you start in, the higher of a chance you have of it being perfectly lined up for the rest of them. Okay, that's all of them. I'm gonna put this vacuum hose over the valve cover, over the stud. That way this is back in place and secured, well, temporarily. And now let's go around and bottom these out slowly. I don't wanna completely crush this gasket here. I just want to bottom it out, get it close to the torque spec, which we will go over in a second. But for now, I'm going to go from the middle, working my way out. And now with all of these started, let's go from the center out and bottom them out. Then we will come back and torque them. The torque for this is 89 inch pounds, so it's not a lot. So when you bottom these out, just make them snug.
Once again, 89 inch pounds. That converts to 7.4 foot pounds in the same sequence, starting from the center, top bolt, going down, and working your way towards the outside, going in sort of a crisscross pattern. If you don't have a torque wrench that goes that low, then you don't have the ability to torque it. Just make it nice and snug with a ratchet or a wrench, whatever you're using. Make sure it's even all the way around. That's what's most important here, so that the gasket can seal up all the way. That's all of them. I'm gonna go back around one more time because with rubber gaskets like this, as you tighten the last few, the first few will want to loosen up just because the gasket squishes, compresses, and allows for more wiggle room and more slack in the, uh, the bolt, basically. It might not always happen, but it does sometimes, so you always wanna double check. All right, these are all tightened down. So now let's just put everything else back together. And now that this bolt started, let's just bottom it out. The torque for this is 89 inch pounds, but I cannot fit a torque wrench in here. So I'm just going to make it nice and snug with my ratchet. 89 inch pounds is not a lot. It's basically just at most an eighth of a turn after it's bottomed out. So make it nice and, nice and snug. Just be careful because it is a very small bolt. You don't want to break it or strip the threads. Getting close, that's bottomed out. An eighth of a turn, done. That's all I'm gonna do. Let's get the ignition coils back in. Slide them all down. I like to put them back from the cylinder that they came from. You don't necessarily have to do that. And now put the mounting bolts back in. and snug them up. You don't have to make these very tight, just bottom them out and make sure they're snug. Let's bring the harness back over. Plug everything in. Doesn't really matter where you start as long as everything gets plugged in and resecured. Make sure all of the connectors click if it's not audible, make sure you at least feel it click. And resecure this harness on those two studs. At the front of the engine, resecure the harness over here. If you unplugged this connector, reconnect it. Get the PCV hose reconnected. Make sure you snap it down all the way and uh, you should see this clip lock in. Do the same on the back side on the intake. It's a little more difficult to see, but if you feel for it, you should, there we go. Feel it snap in place, perfect. Double check all of your electrical connectors if the injectors or ignition coils are not properly plugged in or there's an issue with the wiring, you will have a misfire and the truck will not run properly. So it's important that you double check all of this. Everything else is secured. Let's put the intake tubing back. Make sure that it's seated on both ends. Now let's snug up the clamps. When tightening, I like to tighten them by hand so that I can feel how tight they're getting. I don't want to accidentally break it or strip it out. In that case, I would have to replace it. Just give it a couple turns at most after it has uh, snugged up. Okay, that should be good right there. What you're looking for is when you move this intake tube, it shouldn't move on the part that's connected. It should just flex a little bit, but this should stay put. And there you have it, job is complete. I always recommend an oil change after replacing the valve cover gasket or having the valve cover off for any other reason. The only thing with that is you want to run the engine 
run it for about 10 minutes so that any debris that may have made its way inside there can be flushed into the engine, picked up by the oil filter, and then you can change it out for fresh brand new oil. Having said that, double check all of your electrical connectors if for some reason the engine doesn't run properly and then take it for a road test. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.